Hey everybody, I've spent probably the last three or four hours just doing nothing but cleaning up my storage unit. I've been in here and already got a wicked headache, but I uh, thought you guys might like to, to see it. So here we go. Yeah, so this is where the magic happens. <laughs> it was a massive mess before I worked on it. So yeah. This is a very small storage unit. It kind of looks bigger, bigger than it is on camera. Trust me, there's not a whole lot of space in here. And I am making all the use of it. So to start with, I have all of my stemware, plus the Sherbert glasses or Anchor Hawking Spring Song, I think, Laser Blue. Those are probably already sold, so they're not going anywhere. I've got uh, Stuart Crystal Lyric Pattern, nice stuff. Aseda glasses, I've got, this back here is actually a Japanese glass. Um, it looks Murano, it's not, it's actually luxury Japanese, it's not, it's, it's contemporary. A pair of Bohemian glasses here, another pair of like a set of like 1970s Bohemian shot glasses, more sherbet glasses which mm, are probably sold. Blue sherbet glasses, super popular right now. Then we have all of the early American pattern glass you could ever want. <laughs> and this is not even all of it. I have I have a bunch of fruit stands and whatever. I've got more down here, it's ridiculous. So I've also got vases, I've got these are all the creamers, these are a bunch of the, the celery vases over here, and a few of the sugars and stuff. This this is actually kind of cool. This is a Fostoria um, sugar shaker from early 20th century. I love, I love that glass. The color is amazing. So yeah, more of it down here. That is the Heise, the Heise uh, pinwheel and fan bowl. A few of the different colors. This one, this set here, the, the, the sugar bone creamer is a little bit later. That is um, New Martinsville uh, Radiance, I think is the name of the pattern. Then we've got some uh, American Brilliant period. That is a mustard pot. Then we have <laughs> whiskey glasses and a bunch more of these uh, interesting shot glasses. Early 20th century cut crystal, very nice. These are probably already sold and I think they're Macasa and modern. But again, people are into, the, into that set of stuff right now. This is probably Anchor Hawking, but I don't know the pattern offhand. Ooh, now we have even more. Uh, blown glass Italian, as far as I know. These are two German uh, pressed glass pitchers, I think. Icicle pattern, nice take on, you know, the Scandinavian style. Then we have even more Anchor Hawking Fairfield. Um, can't remember the name of these, but it's more Anchor Hawking again. Anchor Hawking being as popular as it is. Then we've got, I think that's Westmoreland in the back. It's, a, it's an Art Deco candlestick of some kind. Um, Hazel Atlas, a uh, couple of bowls, more Anchor Hawking Fairfield. These are actually Bailey's Irish Cream promotional glasses made by Libby. Then we have <laughs> more Anchor Hawking. <laughs> Can't get away from it. Now, have these as well. This is a set of uh, bubble top jars. They're modern though, they're nothing, they're nothing special. Um, butter holder. My very few pieces of Pyrex um, with a a Bagley Rose Bowl sitting in it and a Royal Copenhagen face because I'm just basically running out of space. Whole set of these, already sold. Then I have even more Pyrex. Pyrex Corel in this case, the Old Town Pattern. A couple of vintage kind of wooden pieces. All of my uranium glass is in here as well as this amazing vase from the 1980s. Then I have like some contemporary glass and pottery. A lot of these would be like from guys from Vancouver. Uh, so some Alan Grant pottery, Suhara, um, then a few other kind of, uh, basically Vancouver glass artists that you've probably never heard of. Then even more, Hooch and Reuther sugar bone creamer set. Our lovely Indiana glass 1970s remake. These little bear cups get me every time. 
they're uh, a very special design by, by Jean-Paul de, de, de Castelbajac. He's a very famous French designer. It actually comes with a teapot and I could not find the teapot. I only found the four cups. I was so disappointed. Anyway, continuing on the tour. Little bits and pieces, more early American pattern glass that I can't fit in anywhere. My cranberry glass. These are a pair of Japanese vases. The Indiana Sleeping Kitten candle holder, which we all love. Mystery blown glass vase from the early 20th century. Probably bohemian vanity set for the bathroom. Alta glass vase with a number of slideshows just thrown in there because I don't know where else to put them. Little Fenton basket. More bohemian candlesticks. More cranberry glass. That one's probably pilgrim. Uh, this is so painful. This is a... You can see the pattern, you know, you can barely see it there. It is a cash franc bubble or soda glass candle holder, which was cracked right down the center. And I kept it, I didn't fix this by the way, I just bought it. I kept it because I, you know, he was one of the, the he was essentially one of the seminal designers of mid 20th century, like one of the, one of the you know, the, the progenitors of mid century modern Scandinavian style. So I kept it, I'll probably never sell it. Then we have some satin glass, that's a Tiffin Compost, Art Deco, early 20th century. I've got some more Westmoreland satin glass in here. Lots of little bits and pieces down here, not all of which is identified. We've got some Fostoria pink opalescent um, heirloom in there. Um, there's an enormous Sowerby glass uh, compote or raised dish in there from 1850, which is holding up a an original carnival glass marigold bowl. <laughs> then we have some enormous vases, Empoli, little couple of hangers there. Now, all of my Japanese porcelain, Japanese porcelain, other kind of Japanese stuff, like this little, this little Inru thing, which I still can't identify. If you know what it is, or if you recognize the maker, please let me know. And you can barely see them. These are some of my, my depression glass pictures. This incredible blown glass pitcher that I still can't identify. Don't know who made that. They were very good at what they did though. Chevron vase from the 1920s. So Art Deco, you can practically, you can practically hear it swinging. Then we have some Bohemian glass or Polish glass. Like this one's Polish, that one's Polish. The rest of this is basically Bohemian tango glass there. Um, some Indiana glass in there because I didn't know where else to put it. Viking. The, 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 the handkerchief vase. This is Fenton, and it's the only stretch glass piece I think I've ever actually found. I have teacups. Many, 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 many teacups. Then a few like little celadon cups and everything, some little demitasse cups back there. Massive blue and poly vase in there. Then <laughs> I have a zoo. These are all my birds and animals and other kind of I don't know what you call it. A lot of little bluebirds of happiness. I think that might that one red there might be a Murano bird. I'm not sure. That one might be Viking, but I also don't know. Lots of little kind of little bits and pieces. And I've got a little set, little family here of crystal birds, <laughs> which I quite like. Then more kind of. Essentially, this is the kind of knickknacks you, that you pick up when you know you're into glass and have no sense of self control. We've got some. I think these are. Blinko crackle glass pictures, nice enough. This is Royal Albert. I still actually don't know what to do with them. This, this is a an express an espresso cup, a brass espresso cup, for a, I think it's a I think it's a Japanese coffee company. I can't remember. And this, don't actually. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. This is Artisiana Rinconada. Um, I think it's Uruguay. Um, they're they're very well known for doing these beautiful little, like ceramic animals and stuff. Then we have the swung glass, and I have a whole bunch of them here. In poly apothecary jar, I still have this uh, Castrop opaline decanter. Very very nice. This is the kind of Scandinavian and Scandinavian adjacent stuff that I have. 
I've got this back here. It's a, per a signed Bertil Valley and Network bottle. This is not the Home Guard Gold Vase. It's a uh, one that's like again, it's made in the style, but it was made in England. It's not Scandinavian. It's just like similar. Aura Four's Bubble Vase, which I quite like. More Home Guard. More Home Guard. Uh, this uh, it's a Harren Silma bowl that I cannot remember the name of. It's a Nutivari. I can't remember. I can't remember how to pronounce that. Then we've got some Sea of Sweden vases. We've got more Costa Bolded back there. Um, you can't actually see it, but there's a, a Stromberghutin, if I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm probably not, Stromberghutin vase there. Krosno should be down on this shelf down here with the rest of the Polish glass, but I can't fit it, so it's staying up there. And then we have the top shelf, more of some glass. This is not particularly unusual. This is modern, but I like it anyway. This is Alta Glass. This is the big rare Viking, which I still I still don't know kind of what to do with it. I'm I'm terrified of shipping it, so I'm still thinking I'm gonna sell it locally. This amber swung vase here is an Ellie Smith. This one is an late 19th century swung vase. I th think it might be the US Lasco. Um the back here, this is a big candlestick in a style called Batuto, I think, like the, the incised glass. This big vase back here, I think is Scandinavian, but I have to look up the maker again. Then we have a Poli bottle. This is a German, oh, I can't remember the name of the manufacturer, but it's modern. It's called a swing vase. Then we've got the little moon and stars cookie jar at the back, missing its top because of course it is. Early American pattern glass vases. This is the Fostoria drape. This one is uh, United States Glasgow Columbia, if I remember right. And then we have a few basically bits and pieces. This is big handkerchief vase. I think it's Czech. That one back there is Japanese. And then we kind of just have a little, little bit of stuff in here, which you can't really see because it's too dark. <laughs> um, but I do have some cool stuff. I'm going to take some of it out. This is probably chalet glass, but it is pretty neat. It's either chalet or it's um, oh, it's gonna be one of the big the big uh, Czech or Polish uh, <laughs> manufacturers. I can't remember. I have a few pieces of it. It's really nice, and yeah, I'm sure someone's going to really love it. Okay, I think that's I think that's all of it. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for watching this uh, little tour. Um, I'm really sorry that I haven't been posting videos lately. Uh, it's mostly because I've had a wicked sinus infection and I have been talking like Darth Vader when I could talk at all for about two weeks. Um, I'll get back to posting regularly now, I hope, now that I actually sound like myself again. Anyway, have a good day.